Hello, uh, Bad of Chaos here. Uh, I had a request for sound, and so I decided to do sound. Um, as far as Orange Box goes, um, there's two main ways to add sound into your multiplayer map. Um, there's a few other ways for single player, but I'm not. I don't really feel it's important at this time to um, introduce it, especially since I don't entirely know how the other methods work. But th these are the most basic ways. Um, in this case, in this map, this is a Dave Defeat Source map I've been working on. Um, there's a pipe, and I wanted like running water to be in the pipe, and so I added this ambient generic. Uh, ambient generics um, play a particular sound file, either looping or they can be played on a trigger um, within a designated radius. Um, in this case, I had the radius set to 200 units long. Um, basically, once you place them, they're called ambient generics, just, to, just so you can get the name. Um, under flags, you can set them to play over the entire map, or you can, if you have this unchecked, it'll play within that designated radius of 200. If you want, you can change the radius by either uh, changing the value within the property box or clicking and dragging it on the one of the grids to make it smaller or larger. Um, change the volume. Max volume is 10. Zero is muted. Um, you can also change pitch and all kinds of stupid stuff like that. Um, here's the, the value for the, the max, like the radius of it. And um, let's say if you wanted the sound to be following a moving object or something, like in the case, um, what's a good example? Um, Portal. Portal had the radio. They used this particular entity to play like the little jingle that the radio plays. Um, so basically, if you have a name for that entity, you can just uh, scroll over here and find the name of your entity, and you can it kind of like proxies the sound so that it, it it makes it look like the sound is coming from that radio. Um, to choose your sound, which is probably one of the more pressing points, you're going to go to um, Browse right here under Sound Name. Change it to raw, or you can you can leave in game files if you want. But if you have your own custom sound uploaded, you're probably going to do raw. Um, there's a filter here, so you can might you can type in whatever you want and find it a little bit faster. Um, let me scroll down. Anyways, um, when you if you have this checkbox hit, when you click on something, it'll automatically play. Um, this is the folder which within the sound folder itself there's all these subfolders and eventually you get to the name um, source handles wave and mp3 but for some reason this um, sound browser doesn't play mp3 it only plays wave um, so once you have that chosen you can hit apply and whoop to do um, one important thing um, to mention is that basically the way they, they kind of dynamically scale the volume depending on how close you are to the entity. And so basically starting within this radius, it'll start playing, but it'll be really quiet. The closer you get, um, you'll be able to hear it. By default, when you place one of those entities, it's like, what's the radius? I think it's like a thousand something. You place a new one, and I and mean generic. Um, see, the, I think the radius is about... 1,200. See, it's really big. Uh, that's 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 probably actually a good thing for most things. Like if you had like a fire going on or something, or I don't know, whatever. Um, anyways, the second way to do sound is the soundscape. Now, for some reason, the soundscape has been getting a lot of heat, or got a lot of heat in the past. People didn't like them. I don't know why. They're they're an excellent tool. Um, these are designed more for doing um, background sounds, like you know, like waves crashing on the beach, or or um, loops of, of that sort. Um, like in this case, I wrote a custom soundscape that, uh, like seagulls, you can hear seagulls squawking, and, and there's like a city battle going on in the background, and all kinds of stuff. Basically, the way they work, um, if you set the radius to um, negative one, which is the recommended thing to do with them, 
Um, basically, whenever you can see them, they activate. And when you ever move into a, when you see another one, it disables the previous one and enables the new one that you can see. You don't now. You don't physically. You know. You don't literally have to be looking at it for it to be playing. Basically, whenever you're when you're in a direct line to it, it'll start playing. And so, like, I have like this indoors sound going, and then when you get down to this basement here, it starts playing like dripping, like water dripping and stuff like that. And when you get back outside, you can hear seagulls and stuff again. Um, now, there's, there's no real direct way to select what kind of soundscape you want. Uh, these here that are designated within this drop-down menu are Half-Life 2 ones, and they're kind of outdated. I don't even know why they have those there still. Um, so basically, if you want to find your own, you got to go into the GCF file of whatever game you want and um, locate it, and then write it down or copy and paste it or something. But in the case of my custom one, I'll just show you my custom one quickly here. Um, Anzio 2. I called it Anzio 2 because it was a you know an Italian themed level and it was really similar to Anzio in design. But anyways. Um, Typically, you want the volume to be really low because you don't want it to be overwhelming the player too much. Um, like, this is 0.9. And as I said, 10 is the max volume. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to write script because that's not what I do. Um, if you're smart enough, you can look at this or other examples and you can figure it out yourself, the you know, the syntax of it. But anyways, um, so yeah, you can change the volume, the pitch, uh, if it's looping or not, or if it just plays at random times. Um, basically, within the sound folder, you just write down the folder name and then subfolders if there's any. In this case, the subfolder is ambient, and then the sound wave, and it'll loop those forever within your game. If you want a sound to play randomly, like in this case, I have some seagulls squawking. And that only happens every 50 to 120 seconds. That's game seconds. Um, uh, I set the volume a little bit high here just because seagulls are typically pretty darn loud and annoying. Typically, you like the default ones. Like this is this is a default one. I copied and pasted in here uh, from the map Anzio from Dave Defeat Source. Um, they're see they're pretty darn quiet. So you probably don't even want to go above one like nearly ever. In this case, I felt it was good, and it sounds good in game when it's about that loud for the seagulls. But um, it's pretty much the way they work. You save them as a text file, and you put them into your script folder within um, your game folders. Um, one thing that's important when you're um, if you're writing your own soundscape to update the script, the soundscape manifest. Um, see, here's all the stock, the stock map. Um, soundscapes. You got Colmar, Flash, Anzio, so on. Uh, and I just inserted mine randomly in here. Uh, Anzio 2, which is originally what I was calling my map, but uh, I, did, I decided to change it. But um, So yeah, you just gotta make sure to update that when you're writing your own. Otherwise, you don't really need to change your soundscape at all. Um, that, that just about does it. That That's just that's pretty much my extent into what I know about um, sound. I'm no, I'm no guru in sound for Source engines, unfortunately. But uh, I hope that helps you a little bit. As far as um, optimizing your sound, I really don't know too much easier uh, either. Like I don't know what decimals or frequencies or bit rates to put your files at. Um, in my experience, pretty much, more or less, everything works within Source as long as it's um, Wave or MP3 or whatever. Um, yeah, good luck. I hope this helped you. Um, so until next time, I'm Bad of Chaos and have a good day.